A heavily pregnant woman was going into labor. She begged her husband to take her to the hospital, but he refused and locked her inside his old farmhouse. She delivered the baby at home, but the baby was missing when she woke up and looked around. Dr. Ruby Stevens moved to this town five years ago. Growing up, she always fantasized about life under a white coat, checking patients' pulses and curing them. She studied medicine, and when she was offered a position in a private maternal hospital in this town, she couldn't resist and immediately moved in with her husband. During Ruby's service, she'd seen several different patients. She was also what most mothers in town hailed as their savior for helping them go through successful labor. One day, she was checking the list of appointments for the week when a couple walked in unannounced. Hello, doctor. I want you to get rid of this, the man commanded without adequately introducing himself. Ruby was stunned because she had no idea what he was talking about. Excuse me? Ruby asked him, looking puzzled. This, don't you see? The man angrily pointed to his wife's baby bump. I hope you're not blind, doctor, the man told Ruby. Of course, Ruby was shocked because she was only praised for her work and not taunted. The man sounded rude and argued that he didn't want the baby. His wife stood beside him in tears. She tried to break free and get out as soon as possible, but her husband wouldn't leave her yet. Stop crying like a useless idiot, the man yelled at his pregnant wife. It's all your fault. You know that I hate the sight of babies, and you hid this thing growing inside you from me. The woman whined inconsolably and begged her husband to take her home, but the man wouldn't listen. He kept insisting that he didn't want to have the baby and called her names to hide it from him. I'm sorry, but I cannot do this if the mother is unwilling, Ruby interrupted. It's against the law and our hospital policies. But the man was stubborn, and after a point, he demanded Ruby do what he said. You're after all a doctor, and you should do what I say. You work for money, and I'll give you that. Now do it, will you? Ruby was boiling, but she controlled herself. Her respect for her job stopped her from shouting at the man. She tried sending him off politely, assuming he would listen. I don't work for money, and she is beyond the stage of termination. I can't do it and put her life at risk, Ruby replied. But the man wouldn't stop yelling at Ruby and his wife. He felt both women were teaming up against him and he kept shouting and accusing them. At this point, Ruby lost it. If you don't stop yelling and leave, I'll call the cops now. Get out of my office, Ruby fumed. The man paused for a while and grabbed his wife's hand. He walked out of Ruby's office frowning. You'll regret saying no to me, he cursed. I'll come back for you. Ruby sighed relief after he left, but the sight of the poor pregnant woman hounded her. She wanted to make sure that the lady was all right and called the cops to investigate. We searched for them everywhere, but nobody has seen them except you, Mrs. Stevens, the officer told Ruby. Since the surveillance cameras in the hospital were under repair, the couple couldn't be tracked further. Ruby seemed lost, and she couldn't focus on her work the whole day. I should have at least noted down her contact number or their names, she exclaimed in disbelief. I shouldn't have let her go with him without knowing more. Even at home, Ruby couldn't get over what happened. She regretted not taking a stand for the lady and felt terrible for not doing anything to help her. I should have done something to help her, Matt, Ruby told her husband. That look in her eyes, I cannot forget that. She wanted to convey something but couldn't do it. Although Matthew comforted Ruby and told her that she did try to help by calling the cops, Ruby was unmoved. She anticipated something terrible would happen to the woman but couldn't predict what. For the next couple of months, Ruby slowly forgot about the lady. She still hoped that she would be okay, but since too many births were scheduled at the hospital, work pressure got the best of her. Mrs. Jason and there's Mrs. Lewis. Ruby read out the appointments for labor scheduled over the next few weeks. Just then she recalled the pregnant woman. Since hers was the only maternal hospital in the entire town, Ruby was confident about meeting the lady again during labor. But even a month later, Ruby didn't see the woman around, not even for checkups. She felt something was fishy. But Matthew assured her everything would be okay and that maybe the couple would have visited from another town. Even Ruby hoped for the same. A few days later, Ruby was fast asleep at home when she heard a weird noise outside the window. She thought she was dreaming but woke up suddenly to someone bawling outside. You hear it too? Matt whispered. What is it? Let's go check. Ruby knew they couldn't be imagining the same thing and immediately got up to find out. As they neared the main door, the crying sound was louder. A baby? Ruby shrieked after hearing the loud, terrifying balls. They opened the door and found a baby swaddled at their doorstep with a note. I warned you, didn't I? It's your problem now, not mine. Ruby was shocked and confused. She carried the baby inside and warmed him up. 
What sort of a monster would lead a poor baby out in the cold, she exclaimed. She wouldn't have had the child if she wasn't planning for it, poor thing. Matthew calmed Ruby down and immediately called the cops. The officers arrived a little later and checked for clues in the security camera footage outside Ruby's house. This is one clever man, the officer told the couple after the footage revealed a man in a mask placing the baby on the doorstep. Ruby was stunned because she'd assumed the child's mother had abandoned it. She couldn't understand why a man was doing this. The footage also showed the guy leaving in a car, but he wasn't smart enough to hide the license plate number. The officers informed the control room about the number and tracked the guy's address. His name is George Reed and he lives on 5th Street, the officer read out loud. Ruby stayed home with the baby while Matthew hurried with the cops to the man's address located several streets away. They broke into what looked like an old farmhouse and froze in front of a horrifying scene on an old ragged bed. Hey miss, miss are you alright? An officer shrieked, splashing water on a woman's face. She lay still on the bed and was unconscious. She woke up moments later and couldn't sit. Can you please call the doctor? I went into labor alone, where's my baby? The woman cried. Matthew and the officers realized that she was the baby's mother and immediately called an ambulance. They scanned the house. It was messy and smelled it of mold. They found George's picture and sent it across to trace him. You live here alone? The officer interrogated the woman. Why didn't you go to the hospital to deliver the child? And where is your husband? Is he your husband? The officer raised George's picture. She was exhausted, even to utter a word, but she knew it was her only chance and told the officers about her and how she got there. My name is Ember. Yes, he is George, my husband, she revealed, pointing to the picture. We fell in love two years ago and married last year, but I witnessed his true colors only after moving in with him. As it turned out, George had assured Ember that he was working in a big real estate company. But in reality, he was an odd jobber who never stuck to a job for long. However, Ember remained in their marriage, assuming he would change one fine day. But it had only gotten worse as soon as he found out that she was pregnant. I didn't tell him we were expecting, but then he found out and wanted me to terminate my pregnancy, but the doctor refused and threatened to call the cops on him. Ember's narration sounded familiar to Matthew. He was stunned and asked her if she'd visited any maternal hospital several months ago. Yes, he took me to a hospital in town and argued with the doctor to terminate my pregnancy, but the kind woman refused and I carried my pregnancy to term because there was no way out, Ember replied. I felt strange last night and I knew I was going into labor. I begged him and even promised him I would take my child and move away from him, but he kept me confined to this place and locked me up, Ember recounted. Ember was rushed to the hospital to be treated while Matthew informed Ruby about everything. Oh my, this is unbelievable, Ruby exclaimed over the call. Don't leave that monster, please find him, she cried. The officers issued a search warrant for George. After nearly three hours, he was found in the airport in the neighboring town. He had tried to flee to another state. The officers arrested him and dragged him to court for the hearing. It's so shameful that people like you still exist, the judge fumed at George who was presented in court the following day. You belong behind bars and there's no escape for what you did. George was sentenced to a long term in jail. After hearing his case, no lawyer stepped forward to appeal for his bail. As a result, he had no choice but to spend several years in prison for his wrongdoing. Ember and the Stevens remained thick friends for several years. Ember's son Lloyd was now five, and he and Ruby's daughter Mary grew up together and loved each other's company. Ruby helped Ember find a job in the hospital and even had her move in a block away from her house. I cannot thank you enough for your help. Ember often got emotional whenever she recalled her past. Maybe we were destined to meet. Ember and Lloyd were more like a family now, and they adored Ruby's daughter. Ember made sure that she did everything to raise her son as a kind man who knew how to respect women and children. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.